This is Bulawag Beach, the windy side of Boracay. So you've been to Boracay one too many times and you feel like you've done it all. Partied like crazy. Experienced the wild, rule-free Boracay before the 2018 closure where they demolished a lot of buildings and businesses. Tried all the touristy activities like the banana boat, sunset sailing, and island hopping. Extensively explored stations 1, 2, 3, and even station X and the privileged station 0. If, like me, you feel like you've done it all, seen it all, drunk it all, <laughs> eaten it all, then you might ask yourself, what else can we do to see Boracay in a fresh perspective? Just like the first time we fell in love with the most famous white sand island in the Philippines. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there's Bulabog Beach. Also known as the other side of Boracay, Back Beach, the windy side of Boracay, or the alternative Boracay. During the windy season, you'll see a lot of kite surfers. After all, it's considered the best kite surfing location in Asia. But when the wind isn't picking up, it's simply a quiet and peaceful paradise. Where exactly is Bulabok? It's a little further than the wetlands. It's exactly the opposite side of Boracay, just a longer tricycle ride away. It's a 5 to 10 minute walk from D-Mall or 10 to 15 minutes from White Beach Station 2. Now I understand why a lot of Pinoy's moved to Balabog Beach during the pandemic to remotely work and get away from it all. And why a lot of returning tourists continue to choose Balabog Beach over stations 1 to 3. Okay, let's do some pros and cons, starting with the cons. Number 1. The tricycle ride to Bulabog Beach from stations 1 to 3 is more expensive. I pay about 50 to 100 pesos each time. It's a 5 to 10 minute walk from D-Mall and a 10 to 15 minute walk from station 2, but sometimes, especially at night after drinking with friends, I'm just too tired to walk. Number 2. The beachfront is a bit dirtier than stations 1 to 3, meaning there are more debris, rocks, and sadly, trash. 3. The sand isn't as white and as fine as White Beach, aka stations 1 to 3. And 4. There is no nightlife, meaning everything's closed and dark after dinner. If you want to party, you go to stations 1 to 3. In case you get hungry at midnight and you're stuck in your Balabog hotel, there's practically nowhere to go get a quick snack. You'll have to wait for a tricycle to come pick you up and take you to stations 1 to 3 or you walk in the dark. Now let's go to the pros. Number one, everything is slightly cheaper from the hotels to the food and drinks. Woohoo! Number two, walang lumot! Unlike stations one, two, three that are prone to lumot or in English, algae, you know, the green icky stuff that photobombs your photos, <laughs> Bulabog Beach is spared from that. You'll find a lot of hidden gems like under the radar coffee shops, secret restaurants, and of course, kite flying schools. Number four, there have been a lot of developments in Bulabog Beach. Compared to last year, Bulabog Beach now has a walkway for pedestrians and bikes. That means Bulabog is getting more popular, and the hipster snobbish traveler in me is kinda hoping Bulabog stays pseudo-secret for a longer time. And if you booked a good Bulabog apartment, resort, or hotel like I did, then you'll love the morning views and being away from it all. Speaking of accommodations, they don't have as much as stations 1 to 3, but Bulabog Beach has some pretty good digs, such as Banana Bay, a cozy boutique hotel where I stayed. Check out my blog, katewashere.com, for the review. Next door is Palaza Private Residences, another cute and artsy spot. There's also Levantine, Seven Stones, New Ohana East Bay, Wind Riders Inn, Lazy Dog Hostel, the new Aqua Baracay, plus many more. 
In Bulabog, you'll find the famously Instagrammable crooked coconut tree, which usually has a long line of Instagram Olympics participants, especially now that Bulabog is getting famous. The only time I was able to get a decent photo was one drunken night with friends. Check it out. <laughs> but I did find my own tree somewhere further down Bulabog Beach. And number seven, no pesky vendors offering you a super combo of island hopping, hair braiding, henna tattoo, seafood paluto, and everything in one breath. Sorry po kuya, I truly support tourism, but after saying no 100 times and explaining 100 times why I'm saying no, I just really need my peace and quiet. Speaking of peace and quiet, once you've experienced a whole day or even just half a day on Bulabog Beach without any disturbance or ounce of stress, then you don't want to go anywhere else on Barakay. Thanks for watching, Kate was here. Subscribe to my blog, katewashere.com, and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.